As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey little feller, how you doing? Hey everybody, welcome to the show in the sweet home Alabama where I'm at my home away from home today. I'm at Weaver Two Whitetails. I was here last year and uh, the boys wound up showing me some magnificent animals. So we're back. We're here to see what one year of growth would do on them. We got a fresh litter of kittens and it's time to get this one started. What do you say, little guy, little girl? It's the middle of August. We're about an hour outside of Birmingham and the bucks, well, they're big, really big. But in looking at them, think about this. They still got another two weeks of growing to do. Hi, I'm Rusty Weaver with Weaver Two Whitetails located in Etowah County, Alabama. We've been deer farming for approximately eight years and with this year's fallen crop, we're approaching 600 animals. The most important opportunity that having this farm has provided for me is raising my children out here. I've got a seven-year-old son, a 13-year-old son, and I'm able to teach them about the outdoors, about farming, animal husbandry, and raise them in an environment that teaches them responsibility and that all of their actions have results that they have to deal with. The business plan for our farm from day one has been to try to create great breeder bucks. We've adjusted that plan to the market. We, we understand that the end market for the entire industry is stocker bucks to be able to provide preserve owners with the, the, the bucks they need to keep their industry going. Um, as a result of that, we continue to, to try to produce high-end breeder bucks. We also try to produce bucks and does that are just consistent producers of wide, framey typicals that are in such high demand with preserve owners. I'm currently serving as president of the Alabama Deer Association. We represent farmers and deer enthusiasts throughout the state. Some of the issues that we're facing today are, are the same as industry-wide in other states. Public perception, dealing with disease issues, and making sure that the government that regulates us understands our industry and isn't overreaching and interfering with what we're trying to do as a business. If you're a deer enthusiast and live in the state of Alabama, I would encourage you to join the Alabama Deer Association. We also have members outside the state of Alabama who visit our state for either hunting or visiting other farms and other purposes for recreation and, and for other wildlife related activities here in our state. You can learn more about our farm and what we have to offer by visiting us at weaver2whitetails.com. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, the North American Deer Registry, Beam Fence Company, winadeerfarm.com, the Texas Deer Association, Newport Laboratories, Game Management Systems, Shock Effect Maximizer and Seacal, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, BuyMyDeer.com, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and by All Seasons Feeders. It's a lifestyle. Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories with Keith Warren is brought to you by Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch. All right, this one is from David. He lives in Alabama. He writes, Mr. Warren, I'm very interested in deer farming. 
but it sure is hard for me to learn about genetics and pedigrees. What would you recommend me doing to help learn more about the business should I visit some deer farms or go to auctions? Yes and yes, David. Uh, the more that you can learn, I think the, the better deer farmer you're going to become. As deer farmers, we're always sharing information back and forth amongst each other. And, and the best way for somebody that doesn't know about something is to go ask. Deer farmers, like if you came out here to Rusty's place, you're in Alabama, so you can't be too far away. Uh, come out here, call Rusty, uh, go onto his website, uh, visit a deer farm, ask a lot of questions, uh, go to an auction and pick up the auction book. And the one thing a lot of people wind up doing is making notes in an auction, how much animals sell for. And I think it'll surprise you. I think it'll surprise you how much you're gonna learn, but also it'll surprise you about the value of the deer and about how much deer farmers are willing to help you. So that's a great question. We came here at the same time last year. We saw a buck named XLT, one named Express Shadow, and some unbelievable yearling bucks. So it's gonna be interesting to see how those yearlings have grown. All right, so these are the same bucks right here that we saw last year in the yearling pen. That's right. They're two-year-olds? They're all two. There are a few three-year-old breeder bucks in here, but the majority of this group is two-year-olds. All right, I'm trying to look through and see which one. I mean, my gosh, okay, I like that one and that one and that one. And Okay, who's that big non-typical buck? That's Batman. That is uh, <laughs> one of our Gonzales breedings, and he, uh, those drop tines, Look like bat wings, so we decided to call him Batman. I can see why you call him that. Okay, so so that's out of Texas blood. That's right. He's Dreambow on Kid Dynamite. Okay, all right. So, you know, is what? So he's fifty percent. He's probably approaching fifty percent, three eighths. Okay, all right, boy. He's a big deer. How big was he last year? He was a little over two hundred last year. I think he was about two twenty. Did one. we film him last year? We did. We did. It's like, you know, we filmed last year, folks, we wound up, we came in with, with all these bucks that are in here, but they were in the one-year-old pen, and I don't know how many 200-inch yearlings we were looking at, and now those same bucks are in these pens right, or the, in this pen right here, and I'm like going, they're, they're magnificent. I mean, they're magnificent. I know last year you had an outstanding express shadow yearling. Okay, where is he? He's right back in the very back with the real tall tines. <laughs> I see him back there. Look at that. Holy smokes, Rusty. He's beautiful. We're, we're definitely going to add him to our breeder program. He, he you didn't breed him? We didn't breed him. We, we wanted to give Express Shadow offspring another year to make sure that they were going to do what we thought they were going to do. And we couldn't be more pleased with the results. So now we're going to integrate them into our breeding program. That deer right there is some kind of beautiful. It's like his daddy. He looks just like him. Oh my gosh, and compared to last year, how much bigger do you think he is this year? I guess we filmed him last year too. We filmed him last year. He actually was one of the smaller ones last year, and uh, he's probably improved 230, 240 inches. He took that big a leap? Yeah, he was a, he was a small yearling, very late born yearling last year. Listen to that, folks. A deer, first off, if a deer grows to be 230 inches, you know he's like, he's unbelievable. He grew 230 inches in a year, okay, only in his second year. so. Uh, and, and is for that reason, as a deer farmer, I don't know of a deer farmer one that makes a decision, a final decision, whether they're going to keep a deer in the breeding program or not at a, as their yearling. Do you? Uh, we certainly don't anymore. Uh, there was some talk uh, among some of the people we consult with about turning him out and <laughs> saving that spot for, for a different buck, and now he's probably, uh, for sure, our best typical two-year-old well he he uh it's a good thing he kept him because he's first string now oh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh okay i'm sitting here rusty how do you in in lining these guys up i know all your deer when you sell a deer the good thing about dealing with rusty when you buy a deer you're not just buying a deer okay you're buying a deer with lineage with a background that's in the registry every one of yours is in the registry right that's right so you can prove you can look at somebody and say here's a piece of paper and this is who they're out of and and i'm going Express Shadow is going to be in most of your pedigrees, or you've got XLT going to be in most of the pedigrees. I mean, that's the way you built your herd. That's right. Our northern line is going to be XLT or a buck that we AI'd with that we brought semen in. Mm -hmm. Our Texas line is going to be primarily focused on Gladiator line bucks and Gonzales line bucks. If somebody wants more information to find out about your deer farm, 
what should they do? They can give me a call at 205-529-9377, or they can look us up on the web at www.weaver2whitetails.com. Rusty, I'll tell you something. 30 years ago in Alabama, there were some trophy deer that were taken. Okay, and because of over-harvest and mismanagement, lack of habitat, those trophy deer kind of went away. And thanks to deer farming and thanks to guys like you, you're bringing giant genetics back to Alabama. And I am proud of you. This is a beautiful crop of two-year-olds right here. I can't wait to see your breeder bucks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Today's show is brought to you in part by BuyMyDeer.com, your online source for monster whitetails.